In this video, you're going to learn to stop the anxiety cycle by exploring an internal sense of safety. So let's take a look at the anxiety cycle. So right here after stimulus is this interpretation that we're in danger. And this interpretation, belief that we are in danger, that the danger is a significant and a real threat causes the anxiety response in our bodies. And the problem isn't that we can't handle real dangers. Our body is built to perceive a threat, act on it and resolve it, and then resolve that stress response. The problem is that when we worry, when we catastrophize, when automatic negative thoughts or mental filtering or memories of trauma come up, we have perceived danger when we're actually safe. So you may spend hours each day in perceived danger, which leads to an anxiety state, and this might last for the majority of the day. And this can leave us feeling anxious and exhausted and overwhelmed because our body is like at this heightened state where its heart is beating faster and its muscles are tight, and it's like you've run a stress marathon while just sitting in your chair at work. In the last section of this course, in section two, we learned to challenge the thoughts that lead to the perception of danger. In the beginning of this section, we learned about how anxiety shows up in our bodies and how we can strengthen our nervous system so that the parasympathetic response can be, become stronger. In this video, you'll learn how to strengthen that felt sense of safety. This breaks the anxiety cycle and essentially retrains our brains to be less anxious. Now, as you do these exercises, I want you to pay attention to what you feel in your bodies, what it feels like to remember that you are safe enough right here, right now. And I'm going to teach you a handful of exercises in this video. Um, in the full course, I'm going to walk you through those exercises in more depth. Um, but you can even just start making some lists right now in, in this uh, short video. Um, it would also be great if you got a notebook or make a folder on your phone or computer that has a collection of these visualizations because it's best if you write them down and rehearse them and practice them until your brain gets very good at recalling them. So, okay, let's jump in. How to build an internal sense of safety. Um, let's start with lists. I like lists because I feel like I'm doing something by writing things down, right? Like lists just make me feel good. So um, let's start with the first list. Make a list of safe places, places where you feel safe and secure. And these can be a real or an imagined place. Um, is it your bed? Is it your grandma's house? Is it your favorite trail or the beach or the temple? If you're wanting to work on this right now in the workbook from the paid course, you can pause the video right now and write down the places where you feel safe. If you're on YouTube, go ahead and write them in the comments. Go ahead and leave me a comment about your safe places. Okay, next, safe people. Who are your protectors? Um, these could be real people, remembered people, or divine people. Who do you feel safe around? Who do you feel loved by? Who do you feel fully accepted as you are with all your, your flaws? How about this one, safe music? What songs make you feel safe? Is it Metallica or a church hymn? What are memories of times you were safe, powerful, happy, or free? Uh, one of my best memories is when I was climbing the Grand Teton with my friend, Allie. Like we had the most incredible trip where we were just in flow. We just moved so quickly and confidently up through the mountains. It was a gorgeous bluebird day in one of the most amazing places in the whole planet. That is one of my best memories. Um, another one, when I was a little kid, we were up at my grandparents' cabin, which is also one of my safe places. It was winter and we went out cross country skiing and the snow was so cold. It made this little shh, shh, shh sound under our skis. And if you've never seen clear sky with no light pollution in the winter, you have no idea how amazing the Milky Way looks. It's the stars are so bright that there is more light than darkness in the sky. Um, I've never seen the stars that bright in my life. 
and it's like you're looking at more bright than dark. So those are two of my like amazing transcendent memories that I have. Okay, and then let's make it one more list. Um, safe sensations. What are smells that help you feel safe? Like vanilla or strawberry or campfire smoke. Um, what are touch like sensations that make you feel safe? Like what's a what's something that you like to feel? Whether it's like your necklace or your bracelet or satin or something that you touch that makes you feel safe or wrapped in a warm blanket. What's a taste that helps you feel safe? Like chocolate ice cream. You know, what are these sensations that send a message to your brain and body that you are safe right now? I mean, I can think of like a good book by a fire at my cabin, like that's incredible. As we work through these lists and as we talk about these things, as you write about them and think about them, pause and notice what you feel in your body. We're bringing to mind a sense of safety and that creates a real physical reaction. Like I can feel a sense of joy as I do this. Okay, now let's, let's move on to our first exercise. And I'm gonna just cover these very briefly in this video so that you have an overview and you might get a feel for which ones of these you wanna practice in depth. And in the full paid course, you know, I've got all these exercises in long form and a place in the workbook for you to work through these. So um, let's do this first exercise called drawing safety. So uh, I want you to get out a piece of paper and a pencil, and I want you to visualize your safe place, real or imagined. And I want you to draw it on this piece of paper. Um, now, the goal here is not to create a piece of art. The goal here is to activate the visual cortex in your brain as you create a sense of safety. So I'll tell you what my safe place is, one, another one of my safe places, and I'll show you what that drawing looks like. So for me, it's a desert canyon on a cool, crisp morning bright blue skies, bright red stone. The walls are steep. Um, it's cool and the air is fresh. I can smell the ponderosa pine, which is a mixture of butterscotch and pine needles, and it's quiet. Now, I'm neither a poet nor an artist, but as I remember this, I feel a sense of ease and happiness wash over me. So that's an example of drawing safety. And I want you to go do this exercise and you'll feel it too. Next short exercise I'm gonna give you an overview of. And again, the full exercise is in the course. The parasympathetic response is all about safety and connection, being truly connected with people who will love you and support you. So now we're gonna create a safe person anchor for you. Uh, Mr. Rogers used to say, when I was a boy, and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. So who are your safe people? How does it feel to be around them? Who protects you and helps you and keep you safe? It could be someone real or imagined. It could be a divine being, an angel or God. Um, and for me, my safe people include my father, my babies, my dog, prayer, cuddling with my husband. Like I said, it can just as easily be your pet as a human. So I want you to go and write in detail about at least one of these in your workbook. Here's another exercise. Um, it's called the light stream exercise. And again, the full, the full exercise is in the course. Imagine a beam of healing light entering the top of your head and traveling down through your body, filling you with warmth and strength and comfort. Imagine it slowly filling you, how warm and safe you feel. And again, the full exercise is in the paid course in the workbook. So another page in your journal or your like collection of safe resources 
could be a page about your strengths and accomplishments. So write about what you are skilled at, what you are gifted at. Write about the hard things you've accomplished. What have you survived? What are you competent at? What are you confident at? Make a list, or maybe you could even like put a little, get a little Altoids tin, and you put a little reminder of all these things in this tin. When you're having a hard time, you open it and remind yourself, these are my safe people. This is my strengths. This is what I'm capable of. And it'll remind you that you are safe. Um, another page in your journal should be about your best memories. What are some of your best memories? Write them down in detail and notice how it feels to remember them. Notice how your body feels. Okay, here's one more resourcing exercise that we use with anxiety and trauma. Um, it's called placing your worries in a container. And if you start to feel overwhelmed by a memory or an emotion, you can visualize placing it in a container, locking it up, and setting it aside for later processing. So for example, visualize a filing cabinet, or you can use an actual one, and write down the title to that memory or that dream or that problem, place it in a file, put it in the cabinet, and say, I'm gonna come back to that later. Here's another one. We can restore a felt sense of safety through self-regulation, which is right here in the present moment, reminding ourselves that here in the present moment, you are safe. Um, so in this situation, I would use a grounding skill. Notice five things you can see, four things you can touch, three things you can hear, two things you can smell, one thing you can taste. And reminding yourself that right here in the present moment, I am safe enough. This is a good mantra. I am safe enough right now. I can get through this. I've done hard things before and I can do them again. I'm okay. You know, or God will protect me or whatever it is. Another thing you can do, gratitude practice. It literally shifts your attention from scarcity to abundance, and that's gonna shift your nervous system. Okay, so there's a big list of things you can do to restore that felt sense of safety. It's resources for when you're processing trauma or other things. Um, so how can you use these? You can choose your favorite resource, and then I would just say, like, try each of these a little bit, and then choose your favorite one, the one that's most powerful for you, and then practice reading through that visualization um, once a day to strengthen your vagal tone. Just not when you're anxious, like in the morning or evening, like schedule a time to do this visualization. And then you can start to pair that visualization during very mild anxiety provoking situations. Um, we don't wanna go and immediately, like every time I'm anxious, be like, okay, let's do the safe place exercise because that's actually gonna pair like really intense anxiety with a safe place exercise. Instead, we wanna practice it when we're calm and then practice it in like a very mildly anxiety provoking situation. And then eventually with time, with practice, you'll be able to bring these skills to mind as you face bigger challenges. Let me just give you an example of one of my clients, um, a client who has experienced trauma. She was getting ready to share a part of her story in therapy that she'd never told anyone. And we talked about how to get ready for this. So she decided to bring her most comfortable blanket to session. And then before we began, uh, we did her favorite breathing exercise, paced breathing. And then she told her story. And um, I was there and I was, you know, giving eye contact and reassurance. And I was a safe person for her. Um, and then after she told the story, she brought to mind the memory of her beloved mother who had passed away. And she thought of her mother hugging her and telling her she loved her and was proud of her. Then we did some more breathing. We ate a piece of chocolate. With her permission, I gave her a hug and some tears were shed, but she left the office feeling lighter and more resilient. So we made sure to keep that memory within her window of tolerance. We used all of these safety and resourcing skills to um, regulate her nervous system in the moment. So these are exercises. They're not necessarily coping skills. You can use them when, you, when you're stressed, but it's best to practice them over and over for a week or so when you aren't stressed. And that way, they're easy for you to recall during moments of anxiety. The goal here is that you have a bunch of resources that you can draw from when you're having a hard time. Okay, hope that's helpful. Um, this video is one section from my online course, Break the Anxiety Cycle in 30 Days. I hope it's helpful for you. Uh, if you'd like to find the full course, the link's in the description. 
Um, I'm also going to include a link to a video showing how the EMDR therapist uses um, the safe person exercise to install resources for someone who's experienced trauma. Okay. Thanks for watching. Take care.